Hey guys, Greg here. Welcome to the Vinyl Rundown channel in uh, another in my series of tributes to Sonny Rollins, who's turning 90 in just a couple of days here. And I'm very honored to have a special guest with us uh, all the way from New York is a professional photographer named John Abbott. John, hi, welcome. Hi, Greg. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, I, I came upon your story only recently and noticed that you had done a nice book about Sonny sort of honoring his uh, 80th birthday. And here we are 10 years later. And uh, you've had quite a uh, impressive career as what I would call an A-list professional photographer doing portraits for an amazing group of people. We'll let people take a look at your website a little later. But in addition to a lot of great musicians, you've done presidents, captains of industry, politicians, Clinton, Trump, Bill Gates, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of... Uh, a lot of magazine covers in the jazz world and even f probably Forbes and Fortune and all that stuff. So out of all those great people, uh, at least looking at your website, it appears that Sonny Rollins is one of your favorite subjects and somebody you've photographed more than just about anybody. Can you tell us how you got involved with Sonny? What's that relationship all about? Well, I think you're right. I think he is my favorite subject. Um, you know, I've always been a music person um but, but i started to actually the the reason i got going with sunny and jazz was because i was doing all these fortune covers and business week covers and newsweek stories and i i thought there's, there's got to be more to this photography than just heads of business and heads of government and uh, since uh, jazz was in new york i started photographing musicians and um, the community was very receptive to what I was doing. And uh, my name got around pretty fast and eventually got to someone who wanted me to photograph Sonny for his uh, tour in Japan. So um, I met Sonny in the, about 1991-ish. And uh, then we did a, a whole bunch of portraits um, and we we got to be fast friends um we hit it off right away and um pretty much every time he did a new record and and uh anytime he toured and for the next 20 years maybe 25 years he, he called me to do his work um wow. yeah so that that was a very honor. yeah it was a real honor no question are you still in contact with him? I know his his health is not great, and he's moved out of the city. I guess. Yeah, he lives. Uh, he lived in Germantown for many years, then he moved to Woodstock about maybe five to six years ago. Could be longer. Time flies a little bit. And um, last time I saw him was in Woodstock about three years ago. Oh, and, pretty, re pretty recently. Yeah, maybe three or four years ago, um, but. I do communicate uh, with his, you know, some of the people who like his his rep and some of the people who know him well. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I think he's saving a lot of his energy <laughs> to think about, you know, whatever he wants to do, meditate, and um, I, I he's I I don't think he's seeing as many people now. Um, right. I would expect, I would yeah. expect not. He's slowing down, but he really doesn't have a lot of family. He doesn't really, he doesn't have a wife or kids. Yeah. And I, I guess he lives more or less alone. Um, maybe we can peek at uh, some of the stuff on your website and we can chat about some of the images. There's just a lot of incredible images here. Thanks. And we don't, we don't have time to go through all of them, but I think through the power of internet technology, I can do something like this. <laughs> And so, obviously, these are all your photos. There's some cropping here that you might not uh, approve of. Let's see if I can scroll to the top there. Uh, right off the top, there are several striking images here. The, the one on the book cover, uh, some of my music fans would recognize that as sort of a recreation of a classic Blue Note album cover. Is that uh, a fair assumption? Well, you know, um, what's interesting about that, uh, cover is that the, there was an art director at Abrams Books who saw my images. My guess is that she didn't know as much about jazz as I did, but she was very talented graphic designer. She saw that image. And she said, boom, that's going to be a bodacious cover, I think was the quote. <laughs> so we tried a couple of different things, but that was the one that worked. 
And um, I'm not even sure she she knows the Blue Note uh, design. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a very classic. Uh, yeah, which but, I don't don't have that record uh, in my little display here, but yeah, uh, striking photo from mm -hmm. the original. And then uh, this one at the top here with the dog. Did I hear the story that that's maybe your dog, not Sonny's yeah, dog? That is my dog. That uh, was my dog, and his name was Dizzy. And Dizzy. Uh, yeah, and I have another do dog, the same breed, the Boston Terrier, whose name is Louie. I, I like wow. to name my dogs after uh, you know famous trumpeters. Um, so maybe like trumpet better than uh, saxophone. I don't know. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I like pianists too. You know. <laughs> Um, drummers, sure. Uh, but now you know, you know, Sonny had two dogs with funny names too. Do you know that story? Well, I know I met two of his dogs. What what dog are you talking he about? He had he had uh, my understanding from speaking with Eric Wyatt is he had two German shepherds, right? And, and they were named Major and Minor. Yeah, I, that he may have had more than two German shepherds because I met <laughs> one of them that was called Carrie, and another one that may have been called either major or uh, I can't remember exactly, but well, yeah. over the years, he's probably had several. Major also heard that. So, so that's a studio shot. Obviously you brought yeah. to the studio to do that with the nice light so, and everything. Right. So, so this was a, uh, a studio session where uh, it was for his nine 11 concert. Um, oh, right. I think that was called, um, what was that called? Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the top, but it ended up that I brought my wife brought the dog to the session because I knew that Sonny loved dogs, and his his agent said Sonny loves dogs, so bring Dizzy if you want. <laughs> so the minute I brought Dizzy, she she walked in to the um, the studio. Uh, Sonny immediately just started laughing and petting, and Sonny and and Dizzy jumped right up on on that. Uh, couch, and we did a whole shoot. I mean, I, I ended up he ended up on the cover with uh, with Sonny. Wow! So, so that's that's the second album of Sonny and Dizzy on the cover, I think. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I can think of at least another one. Oh, Sonny, yeah, Sonny, well, Sonny side yeah. of the street. That, I'm thinking of Sunny side up. Dizzy's Sunny on side the up. Is that the one? Yeah. With also that's Sonny, Sonny Stitt and Sonny Rollins, and I don't, I don't know if Dizzy's on the cover, but anyway, that was just a, yeah, I don't think so. Ray Brown, jazz joke. Yeah. yeah, that's a great. Yeah, album. Looking for a copy of that. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a that's a very nice cover cover or shot, I should say, black and white. But most of your stuff is color, yeah, and uh, and striking in color. And a lot of people, old fashioned folks like me, who think of the album covers from long ago, think in terms of black and white. Yeah, and this is one of the few uh, times where we're seeing uh, musicians and jazz musicians in striking colors, mm. and I know that seems to be part of your style, but also part of Sonny's style and Sonny's wardrobe. Yeah, no, I think um, it's def that I think we're definitely com compatible there. Um, I had I have photographed Sonny so many times that he actually would ask me about what what he should wear. And we, we had said, well, we did red and we did blue and we did green. And the last one we did was the purple one that you see there. And so we, um, but he was always, you know, willing to talk about how to style things, you know, what we could do to make it work. Um, I just, I just love color. I mean, I, I can't help myself. Um, yeah, your, your style, uh, I think it's partly your style is, is, uh, it's certainly very colorful and maybe we don't see that in portrait photography that often but um another question about photography oops yeah. I'm going to be too fast here um what little i know what little i claim to know about photography let's see if i can center this on a better set of photos here um you know part part of a photographer's job supposedly is to uh reveal uh, some of the inner personality of the of the subject, and and Sonny has, I would say, a, a striking personality. You see a lot of pride and confidence, right. and, and el elegance in his shots. He's a very elegant and stylish man. He's a actually a very handsome man. If you look at back at his photos back in the fifties and sixties, strikingly handsome. 
yeah. know, very stylish with the different haircuts and sunglasses. So this is kind of a philosophical <laughs> photo photography question. How much of this of, of your job is revealing what's inside the person versus painting what you want the person to look like on them? Is that a fair question to ask? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's a fair question. But my my feeling about uh, uh, as long as we're going to talk about photography, I think that some of my heroes are people like Richard Avedon, Irving Penn, um, even even jazz photographers like Herman Leonard. And if you have, have known their style and the way they deal with portraiture and deal and with people and cameras and people. The, um, the camera is really just the conduit between the two of us. You know, I, what, I'm, not, it's, I, I, I'm not trying to equate the way I take pictures with the way Sonny plays his music, but I, I try not to think about it too much. What I try to do is all the skill that I've learned over the years um, with lighting and cameras and f-stops and the understanding of uh, depth of field and all these things, it's in there. You know, I don't have to think about it when I'm taking pictures. So when I'm connecting to the subject, there, it's not about, it's not really about trying to capture the person. It's really about the connection that we have together. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's a, sometimes it's a, a moment where they're relaxed. Sometimes it's a moment where um, they're paused. And sometimes those are the best pictures when when they're not posing. So I have to be sort of aware. So I, I, don't, I don't really have a deep philosophical point of view about photography. For me, I think it's either you have it or you don't. You know, you're either, you're either, you're either a good photographer or you're not. And um, <laughs> like, I have three kids, right? And I, they're all artistic in some way. But my son, my middle son, is a brilliant young photographer. And I haven't taught him anything. He just goes, he takes pictures. So I think it's like a genetic thing that my grandmother was a great photographer. So I think that you, you, you develop your skills if you have it. Um, that's a problem. I mean, but, but you yeah. have to be able to uh, not think about the technical and like yeah. you say, make the connection and make, the, make yeah. the subject feel comfortable. And since you have right. such a long relationship with Sonny, he, I guess he feels more comfortable with you than any photographer out there because he certainly uh, brought you in on more projects. So that's a great honor to be that uh, that guy, the sunny guy. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if there's others I can. Uh, this one in the middle, the sepia tone, is that film? Yeah, that's that's Polaroid. So Polaroid. yeah, so one of, one of the great things about cameras is that you can find different cameras that do the same thing, but the tech, the technology and the technique can can drive you artistically, right? And this is an eight by 10 Polaroid with an eight by 10 view camera. So you put, the, you put the big hood over your head, you focus it, you put the piece of film in and you do one, one frame. So I did a lot of that with Sonny. I did a lot of that with a lot of musicians, um, uh, Max Roach, Clark Terry. Um, yeah, we can look at some of those uh, yeah, pictures but I also. That. But I, the sepia is um, this. This was um, a technique that sort of came along in the the nineties, and uh, now you can't get it anymore, which is a crime because the stuff is so beautiful. Um, th there's a company, I think, in Europe trying to make uh, right. regular format Polaroid. I think we yeah. bought, bought some of that. Uh, but they're trying, but they're it's not. Too, it's too precious for us to use it, so I think we bought you know, 10 yeah. frames and it's still sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, uh, that brings to the, uh, the photography question about, um, shooting ratio because that old fashioned get under the hood is, you know, one picture every couple of minutes. <laughs> right. And in today's digital world, you can shoot it. Yeah. A thousand in one minute. Yeah. Uh, are you, are you a fan of, um, shooting a lot and then doing a lot of editing and deleting or do you like to um, concentrate or is it just change depending on the situation well i think you know the digital the digital um age of photography has helped in some ways for a guy like me who sort of came up on analog um so you are able to so i don't have to look at polaroids anymore i can immediately 
assess what the lighting is. Um, but I, I actually love to break out my film cameras every once in a while, especially when I'm photographing musicians. I'll break out a Hasselblad and, or a four by five, and I'll just shoot 12 frames. And that's, you know, or two, two rolls maybe. Um, I remember when, back when I was shooting only film, I met, um, um, I think Will, William Claxton, the great Bill Claxton, photographer from California. Mm -hmm. um, and he told me that when he was doing pictures of, I think it was Jerry Mulligan and Ben Webster, he only had one roll of film um, on the shoot. So he was, every single frame was like precious. Make it, make so the, there's a really great picture of Jerry Mulligan smiling through Ben Webster's horn. And he said he waited and waited and waited for that. And I've been there. I, I know what he's talking about. Um, right. so waiting for the perfect, perfect moment. Yeah. I mean, one time I was, back when I was shooting film, um, I was photographing Miles in, in performance at Lincoln Center. And the balcony was was only maybe 20, 40 feet from Miles' horn. He could hear every time I took a picture. He, he got really pissed off. He doesn't like any of yeah, it. Really <laughs> so, is, that, is that shot on the site here? Yeah, I think it is on the music yeah, site. We'll get, to but, it. we'll get to it in a bit. Yeah, so anyway, I, I realized, so he did two shows that night with B.B. King. And the second show, somebody came up to me and says, if you don't, if you don't stop taking pictures, <laughs> then Miles is going to stop the performance or something oh, like that. I can't remember exactly what the threat was, but it, I thought so. I just was, you know, it was just. So more. Miles is Miles is kind of the opposite personality of uh, Sonny in many ways. I mean, uh, Miles is an extremely difficult person to uh, work with, to be with, and uh, obviously Sonny is very gracious, humble. Yeah, I think that's part. Of, that's, that's partly Miles' uh, I don't uh, see public Miles. persona. I, I think you know if you talk to Sonny about Miles, you'd say he was quite friendly. Really, quite friendly. Yeah, I think My Sonny would say that Miles was shy. Um, wow, that's part of it. Um, I don't know if I see the Miles shot on here. Oh, um, it's the I back of him. <laughs> it's a uh, back of his head. It's the back of his body. Um, uh, maybe it's not on there. I looked through these very carefully, and we can go through some of these. There's some beautiful, beautiful, wonderful shots, and I recognize 80% of these. Oh, here's the back of Elvin Jones, not the back of Miles. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's not in there. I Back of Pat Matheny. That's right. His drummer, Antonio Sanchez. I looked at, I, I, I preloaded and looked at a lot of these, but a lot of, a lot of great jazz greats um yeah just just speaking of the elder statesman of jazz here another photogenic man uh roy haynes oh yeah roy who's, who's 95 now believe it or not and still yeah. playing yeah and uh i hope i look that good when i'm 60 as he looks when he's 95. yeah he's amazing isn't he yeah some yeah. of these guys michael yeah. bricker passed away and um Anyway, I've got I've lost my train of thought. So thinking yeah, about Miles, so you're so. talking about Miles. I, I'm not sure <laughs> it's up here. Um, yeah, but so many probably, greats you've got on here. It's amazing. Well, thanks. And the fact that you got to meet virtually all these people and work with them—that's kind of my dream come true—is to meet. Yeah. Some of these people I've met maybe two or three of the people on this list here. Well, it's it's part of it's for me. It's um, apart from being able to photograph and do what I love and, and and make pictures of these people whose work I admire so greatly. Um, to be able to sort of hang with them, either in in a studio or when they're making music, or when they're hanging out with other musicians, it's really kind of mind blowing. Uh, some of the some of the experiences that I've had, and um, uh, I think it's definitely the most valuable um, experiences that I've had as a photographer, uh, these, these musical experiences. And yet I'm, I'm, I'm speculating and I, I this might be an in, inappropriate question, but it's probably the corporate uh, uh, portraits that pay the bills, but the, yeah. the musicians yeah, well, is more of a labor of love. 
And right. part, of, part of that is, you know, Joe Blow's the CEO of a company for three years and he's gone in four years and nobody's going to really care about him. But these are cultural icons that have right. a legacy that should be going on forever. So I'm glad uh, somebody yeah. at your level's taking the time to uh, uh, capture these greats on, on film. No, I think I think you're right. I think um, we won't tell the CEOs I said that, but that's all right. They they know it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there are, certainly there are some brilliant people on on that part of your uh, portfolio. Oh also. yeah, well I I think one of the great things about a camera is that it's it sort of lets you into places that other people never get to. Um, that's why I've, I've photographed a couple of presidents and um, senators and businessmen and, um, and 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 I'm not really bragging that way I just think that one of the things that you can do is that if you can handle a camera and you can handle people who are talented and successful then you are um, then people want you to take their picture or so that seems to have worked for me for 30 years um, yeah there's two different skills there yeah uh, learning to run the camera and get the right lights and the right shot and dealing with the people and making the person feel comfortable. See, I'm, I'm terrible at that because I'm fiddling with everything. I'm, Oh shoot, hold on. Right. I, I, I uh, ran into the president of, of blue note records. Don was at a concert uh, last year and I wanted my son to get his picture taken with him. Yeah. He's one of the most recognizable faces. Yes. He always wears the same thing. And he was nice enough to stand there and I fiddled with the camera and I couldn't get it to work and I couldn't. And I'm like, this is so unprofessional. This is so yeah. embarrassing. And he just stood there like a trooper waiting for me. <laughs> and, and you know what? I, I did the same thing with um, what's the great um, race car guy, the old, old ornery race car guy. Not the, you mean American? Yeah. yeah. Mario Andretti? No, no, American guy. Um, he's now kind of an old coot. Um, yeah, um, Rich, Richard. Uh, I'll, I'll oh, yeah, Richard. Um, was it Richard Petty? Yeah. Anyway, it was at a big event. I did the same thing with him. I couldn't get the camera moving. Yeah. He just said, "Screw it," and he walked away while I was just standing there. So, uh, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is there's a skill involved in uh, in making all those things come together at once and uh, not making your subject feel nervous or uncomfortable while you're while you're dealing with some very complex uh, equipment and, and rules of lighting yeah. and you've got to get the people relaxed and yeah. want, to, want to look at the camera and want to want to cooperate with you so it helps it helps sure it helps, it helps. That's a great skill that you have and I'm a little bit of a nervous person so you know oh my god you know <laughs> I'm kind of like Kramer I knock everything over and you don't seem like Kramer to me. <laughs> well, uh, I, I can be a little clumsy under under yes. stress. You see, the under stress is when people uh, people kind of reveal some of their true. Uh, That's true. That's right. Yeah. Actually, is this is this a guy named Jason Moran here? Yeah, Jason Moran. Yeah. So that was at his concert, where uh, Don was was sitting right in front of me. Just yeah, a coincidence. And I certainly recognize Joe Lovano there. Who's yeah, Joe. A major Sonny Rollins fan. I would have loved to get him oh, yeah, absolutely. involved in this. Uh, and Michael Brecker, who I've seen, who died tragically of cancer. Right. Other amazing people here. So let's turn back to Sonny. Okay. Uh, is there a Sonny anecdote or story that you want to share with us uh, before we go? You've given us the dog story and the yeah, and uh, others. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll go back to the Sonny page. Let me just think about. Uh, you know, I had a lot of great great experience with Sonny um how many times have you shot him I've done about maybe a half a dozen portrait sessions with him mm -hmm. uh, you know full uh, sessions um like two three four hours so oh, I think I did one for like a half a day mm -hmm. um and uh, I and, and there was times there were some of those things he was playing the music for me the whole time that's amazing <laughs> Private was, concert with Sonny. Private concert with Sonny, yeah. Um, That's amazing. So this one right here in the bottom left. Um, mm -hmm. The shadow. That was 1995. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll tell you a, a personal story because it's very indicative of the kind of person that Sonny is. Um, 
So I had met Sonny in a year before, and it was the first time we had done sort of a big time portrait session. He's wearing the red Met bandana, and we really hit it off. You know, the chemistry was good, and we were telling jokes, and he he, he was he seemed to be interested in my opinion, which surprised the hell out of me because I was like 30 years old or something. And um, so the next year, I in that year, I had found out that I had had something called an acoustic neuroma, which is a, a, a benign oh. brain tumor. Oh my God. And uh, so I just had, I had two young boys. And so I had to have neurosurgery that year. Oh, so wow. the very first person who called me after I came out of uh, my neurosurgery was Sonny Rollins. Huh. He called me on the phone. He said, I heard you weren't feeling well and I hope you're feeling better. And then he sent me a, a note and he said, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get together again soon. So that next year I did these pictures. So in the course of having that operation, I lost hearing in one of my ears. Oh, I'm perfect. deaf in my right ear now. Oh, and wow. um, which is, which is really sucks because I, you know, I'm a musical person and I could, I could used to be able to really sing on key and harmonize and all kinds of things like that. Oh, that's awful. So, but but I was really worried about how it would affect my my feeling about music, and it didn't change it. It's like your brain has a way of sort of taking music and um, allowing you to sort of understand it uh, as well as with two ears. I think the brain is fairly amazing that way. Well, Beethoven made it work with zero ears. Yeah, and Beethoven, it was already in his head. I, I found out that uh, Marcus Miller really has only hearing in one ear. Huh. I found out that um, people like Stephen Colbert, he's got only one good ear. I found out also, I found, you know, there's a whole list, <laughs> right? And, 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 and um, so what I realized is that I was lucky. And so Sonny was very gracious. And that, that particular afternoon, um, I ended up having like one of the most amazing sessions I've ever had in my life where we did all these incredible pictures and he, we, we sort of talked about the year, you know, I just, he's just such an incredibly, um, kind person deep down besides the fact that he's brilliant, he's, uh, talented, he's powerful, he's famous. He's all these things that people know. He's actually really, really really nice person and um i think very thoughtful and compassionate very thoughtful my god and 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 you know he's he's, he's just so kind he, he asked me about my my parents and my dog when dizzy died he wrote me a note hmm. you know, dizzy that my dog dizzy right. and um i i can't really i can't really say enough about this man i think that he's just be you know i i'm i just feel lucky that he sort of let me into his his world you know, sort of let me into his band for a while. You know? Very fortunate uh, I know. Kind of relationship with, I've been referring to him as the greatest uh, American jazz master, or the greatest living American jazz master. So, yeah, um, I would agree with you. The Colossus, and um, I never even got to see him play, unfortunately. And I've seen a lot of the greats and Miles and Dizzy, but uh, never got to see Sonny. And in the course of doing this little mini almost documentary series I'm doing. I'm just, I'm hearing more and more great stories about him yeah. as a person, not necessarily his playing. Yes. Everyone knows his playing is great, but I'm, I'm learning so much about things that he's done for people. Um, some of which are very private that I'm only hearing off camera. Like, did you know, Sonny did this for me and my family? Oh my God. It's a, yeah. a very uh, charitable, giving, kind, thoughtful person. Yeah, uh, a great, right. great role model, and he looks great too. <laughs> yeah, he's um, yeah, he really he does. I, I think picture on the right here. I mean, how many men at that age are anywhere close to that handsome? He's got he's probably eighty something there. He was um actually there. He was this was two thousand five. Okay, so he 70, was seventy five. Seventy five, not bad, right? Still, yeah. That picture was funny because he said, "John, uh, do not make me smile." I don't want you to make me smile. And then I got him to smile a little bit. Yeah, there's a big smile there. Yeah, no. Oh, he was kidding, you know, and then oh, I got the picture. The, th the thing that's kind of great about that picture is that that picture was the one that was used to model the um, the cartoon character that comes on The Simpsons. 
Oh, right, right. I heard so, about that, and I'm not sure if I've seen that episode. I thought I've seen every Simpson. Yeah, they took they took this picture. They took his, sort of his hair, the cut of his suit. They may have mm -hmm. changed the color of his shirt, but that was the that was my image, which made me kind of that was kind of a nice moment, a Simpsons moment for me. Well, now now you've really hit the big time. If you big time, if yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. Simpsons. Yeah. And, uh, Eric White told me that uh, Sonny's the only person musician that's been featured twice on the simpsons yeah they built that other it wasn't eric it was somebody else they built that uh bleeding gums murphy character around son because right. he's, right. he's shown playing on the bridge and then they had the <laughs> the actual sunny and i think he came on and did his voice too yeah yeah he did that's right yeah yeah that's a yeah, very nice photo and uh i think some jazz musicians or musicians have a thing about smiling on camera and maybe yeah. they don't always let their personality and they want to appear tough and whatever. And a, a lot of sunny photos, you won't see him smiling and his yeah. covers, but that's not really his personality, I guess. I think deep down he's, he, you know, he's, he's really a, a very gentle person um, from what I know of him. But um, see, there's a picture in the middle there. See how he's, he's fr so friendly. He's changing his horn. He's putting his Best horn in Messing with the saxophone. Yeah, yeah. Putting on the mouthpiece or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, one of the, I, I, I think some of the best moments that I've had with Sonny were when I wasn't taking pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sometimes when we're taking pictures, we we're, were talking, but mostly he's concentrating on his own image and I'm concentrating on trying to get the, the best picture. But sometimes when we would be finished, or when I would just visit him in his house and we would just talk on the phone or something like that, we go into all kinds of great conversations. And uh, that's when I really um, would get to know the man even more. Um, it was really funny when we had 10 years ago when there was a book signing when Bob Blumenthal, the writer who sort of did the essay, who did the essays, and he and I did this book together. Um, there was the three of us doing the book signing and Sonny was on my left. And it was the first time I was sitting next to him for like two hours as all these people were coming through signing. He was cracking jokes. He was making me laugh. And I had never actually heard um, his humor. So in such a relaxed way. And that was pretty, that was a pretty cool experience. You don't remember any, any of those jokes for us? Hmm. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like Jimmy Heath stuff, you know, uh, you know, dirty jokes and uh, not off color, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jimmy was so clever in that way, but Sonny was just always so clever. I can't remember. I just remember that I was smiling and and laughing the whole time. Yeah, nice. yeah. He really likes to connect with people. Um, I've heard other stories of people on the phone with him for two, three hours. Yeah, and he he always stays at the end of his concerts and signs every autograph for everybody in line, no matter how long it takes. Yeah, he does that. Yeah, and you you just don't you just don't see uh, superstar musicians who want to take the time to uh, invest in uh, connecting with people. So that's amazing. Yeah, and, I think that's uh, true. Really, I'm uh, stuff I'm learning about him through doing these interviews. Uh, I, I just keep hearing more and more of the the sentiment that Sonny is is just really a, a people person. Mm -hmm. even though he seems to live alone and I don't know if he's around anybody and I have no idea if he's gets to see people on a regular basis. And uh, somebody told me he's, he's not going to probably recognize his 90th birthday in any way, probably wouldn't want a party no. or any kind of uh, a big, uh, you know, celebration. So interesting uh, contrast there. Yeah. I think he has a very, you know, he's always had a very strong inner life, um, and and that has that has maintained him throughout his whole career. Um, his spirituality, his his connection to Buddhism, his uh, his he's very careful about his, what what he eats, and what um, he, you know he does have a few few things that he likes to do that are connected to popular culture. He loves baseball. Loves the news. I'm not sure how much of the news he listens to now, but uh, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no, I know we we all pretty much have to turn the news off now. Well, speaking of baseball, I don't know if you're familiar with this um, the story of him 
looking like Don Newcomb. Do you know that story? Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nuke. I don't yeah. really know how that came about. I know there's an album called Nuke something. Well, and so, oh, well, well Sonny looks like Don Newcomb. Is there a so story I, behind I, that? Yeah, I think the story is this. I think it was it, it simply it's um, he was in it, gotten into a taxi cab with Miles. And the taxi driver said, um, you're Don Newcomb. <laughs> or you look like Don Newcomb. Because um, Don Newcomb it was the Brooklyn Dodgers uh, baseball player at the time. Yeah. And Mile um, was a pitcher, right? So yeah. he said, um, so I think for it, that was the connection. So either Mile said, oh, I'm, you know, it's Nuke, you know, or that was the connection. So I think it was the Miles taxi driver, Sonny lookalike. And that was how he got the name and that stuck. So if Miles gives you a nickname, it's probably going to stick for a while. <laughs> yeah, I didn't right. know. I didn't know it was from Miles. I just knew there was a connection to Don Newcomb. That's that's what that's what I've heard. I've heard that story a couple of times. I it's, could be wrong. That's good enough. Uh, yeah. Good enough for for uh, my my fans. Uh, yeah. A, a quick look at some of your other portraits, but I don't want to keep you much longer. Oh, you know, it's fine. It's Friday night, man. Let's let's enjoy it. Yeah. Well, it's you know it's only four thirty here. <laughs> oh yeah. Cornell West, I recognize. Obviously, oh, yeah. some other mega stars here, and uh, he looks very serious there. But that's his. Uh, that's his. You want to put? You want to put those up as you're looking at him? Oh, am I not? Am I not doing it right? Oh. I'm looking at you right now. You're I hit the, the wrong. I hit the wrong there button. You there you go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Cor Cornell West, uh, activist, jazz guy. Yeah. Writer, very serious there. Yeah, he's a serious guy, but he's um, he actually uses a lot of jazz references to his heroes you know yeah he he's appeared about. in a lot of the documentaries ken burns and that sort of thing yeah but he also equates the power of coltrane or the power of charlie parker or the you know the 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 talent of sonny rollins with other public figures i've heard him talk like that mm -hmm. I, love, I love those jazz references he makes all the time yeah and uh, kind of pulling jazz into the culture at large yeah which is a shame that uh, I'm afraid the younger generation might not uh, even know about this sort of stuff. That's kind of what uh, is my impetus to do some of these things. Like it's yeah. up to up to me to bring jazz to the younger culture, but uh, whatever. Uh, that's some, we got some industry people there. I actually know this lady in the middle here because I used to work for that company. She owned, was a big financial person. Oh. Uh uh, yeah, that's uh, Bibl Biblowitz. Biblowitz. And she's she the daughter of uh, Andy White. The guy, yeah. the guy from uh, City Corp. But I used to work for a financial company that she was the CEO of. Okay. T ten yeah. years ago. Yeah, so I, you know, that's that's my yeah. other life. Um, uh, I photographed Sandy Wild three times. I've done like four covers of magazines with him. and So these uh, end up in, in magazines as opposed to just a annual reports both. or, a, or a website yeah i've done both you know i've done a lot of annual reports and stuff but i magazines was magazines were always in in the, my early days magazines were sort of more valid and important mm -hmm. it was the only images of people that were out there before the web right. kind of caught on yeah magazines, so, magazines. Another, another dying medium what are they yeah belafonte look how handsome he is yeah, he was there. He's probably in his so that was, that was the same year I did that for Newsweek when he um, was the, the I think he was the villain in the movie Kansas City. Hmm. So this was mid '90s, maybe. Okay. Late '90s. Yeah, and his, he had a studio in New York. Yeah. Yeah, he looks yeah, extremely handsome man there. You see that uh, Lorraine Gordon there uh, at. Of the Village Vanguard, that's oh, sitting. She's, she's the lady who runs it still. She, she, yeah, she she uh, passed away a couple of years ago, but oh, she what, what? Who runs the place now, and who? Owns I, you know, I don't know. know who runs it. Maybe it was sort of her protege guy I would know by sight. I should know his name, but I don't. Uh, I don't know. That's. Who runs uh, it. I've been to the Blue Note. I still haven't been to the Vanguard. That's my bucket list: is to make sure I hit all those. Jazz yeah, you got to get to the Vanguard. Absolutely. I'm out here in California. We don't have the jazz club, uh, even though we have the music business. Yeah. We don't have anything like a jazz club tradition like you guys do in New York. But I guess so. Billy Berg's is not there anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't know that one. Now that was the one where Charlie Parker. 
Oh, oh, way back. You're going way back. Shelly's manhole that's been gone since the 50s. Oh, yeah, right. That's right. There's, a, there's, a, I mean, we had some. Sure, yeah, I know. We, we had a 42nd Street or something like that. But uh, mm. Jeff Daniels plays a guitar. Yeah, he's, a, he's a musician. He loves guitars. Yeah. Um, guess I didn't know that. Yeah. You find that. This, uh, this, I'm sorry, were you talking about Jeff? No, go ahead. That's all right. Yeah. This, uh, is there a story behind this Klimt? Yeah, that uh, is the Klimt painting. And that is the that is the Klimt painting that was um, stolen by the Nazis that right. fired by uh, the Austrian government or Austrian. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the woman who was the the niece of the woman painted, it was bequeathed to her. Mm -hmm. She eventually fought back. Right. Or, and that was the lawyer who, who made it happen. Oh, that's the lawyer. Okay. That's so there was, lawyer. A, there was a movie about this a few years ago. Which that I was saw. about him. It was sort of his story. Right. The woman, I think, was maybe still alive. But, when I but, the, but the woman who uh, ended up inheriting these photos is the mother-in-law of a friend of mine out here in California. The woman who, who, who inherited the, 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 pa the paintings. Got it. So she, when she, when she got these paintings and she worked with museums and the, I don't know, they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions, yeah. And uh, he was, he was, uh, it's his ex mother in law. So he, uh, he got out of that family just a little too early. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I've been following in this story because I have this wow. distant personal, uh, yeah, connection to this uh, wow. this family. Yeah. And uh, it's an interesting story, interesting movie. The movie didn't do that well, but mm. uh, it's a fascinating story. Uh, other people here, no, I don't recognize all of them anymore. Yeah, some of them are. Just, on. Yeah, there's Joey DeFrancesco. There's Michael uh, Michael Wolf. Um, oh, the uh, the organ yeah. player, the pianist. Am I looking? Is He's that right like in the black and white. No, right in the middle. Right in the middle. Um, oh, Joey. Okay. Oh, Joey is there. Yeah, yeah. There's Joey and there. Joey in the Joey's in the middle there. No, no, no. Uh, no, sorry. If you go up, uh, there's this Michael Wolf in the middle. Right there, right. Okay. And Joey's in the middle of that sepia portrait on the upper right there, below the Klimt painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, uh, he's a big guy. Yeah, he's amazing. He's yeah, that's a amazing a organist. I saw him play with Michael Brecker when he was probably only sixteen years old. So I, I, I keep thinking of him as a kid. Yeah. But that was thirty he's, years ago. He's an absolutely phenomenal musician. Um, yeah. I, I think that he's one of the most incredible people to see live. Um, I, this is the first time in my life I was invited to do the pictures and the video at, on the jazz cruise. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was a, the tour in um, Caribbean and Joey was there and I got to photograph and hang out with him, you know, five, six, seven different gigs. He can do anything. I mean, he is most, one of the most exciting uh, musicians I think I've seen. I, I was really uh, blown away when I saw him. He was an unknown when I saw him. He yeah. Started, but, you know, st stole the show. Yeah. But who's he with there, though? Who are the other so uh, the one guy is a drummer. Um, I forget his name. The other guy is a guitar player. Um, Frank Vignola. So that's his, that's his trio. That's okay. his trio. And the name of this record was called Goodfellas. Goodfellas. That's why they have one. Uh, it was their idea, okay? The Italian thing going back to uh, New yeah. York. I get it. You got a lot of you got a lot of pictures of Tony Bennett. Yeah, Tony. I've done lots of sessions with Tony. Um, another pretty uh, wonderful person. Besides the fact that he's so unbelievably talented and can has done everything, he's actually really really down to earth guy. Um, real sweetheart. And he's he's still singing, I guess. He's up there. Yeah, the, the I mean, I he started is. singing at 90. He was still yeah. getting high notes. I did a record with Diane Krall recently, and yeah, you took yeah. some photos of her. Maybe you did her album covers. I don't know. Uh, I've done – I've never done her album cover. I've done two, oh, three, two or three recording mm -hmm. sessions where she was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Well, um Unless there's anything else we should cover, we've seen some of the best. Well, your your, your music page is great too. <laughs> and maybe my viewers would like to see some of those shots because you've got. Did we already go through this page? 
Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. Winton, Lena Horn, looking beautiful at yeah. in her 80s. Ornette Coleman, Jimmy Heath. Yeah. Uh, Rachel Z, Christian McBride. Christian McBride, I've seen play, and he's yeah. in a handful of your photos here. Yeah. And uh, Joe Lovano again. The uh, McCoy Tyner down here. Yeah, McCoy. Um, What's he up to? Well, he th here. Um, this he. This was at Steinway on Fifty Seventh Street, mm -hmm. and so they said, "Just come and do your pictures here," because he was a Steinway artist, and so we did all these these pictures. It, it, um, it was pretty pretty great day, I got to tell you, to hang out with McCoy Tyner. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> um, he liked these pictures so much that um, he used them it, 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 over and over and over again for himself, which made me very happy. So you see the, this, there's many different pictures from this day of shooting that uh, McCoy uh, used to promote himself, and that, that made me very happy. Well, that looks like it's in a studio, though. Yeah, it wasn't. We did. We brought a white seamless. Oh, you, you brought yeah. it back around. We put it underneath that. We had to lift I guess, up. I guess you don't want to be carrying pianos around New York. For nah. I've done it though. I had a piano. <laughs> once, I had a piano once uh, rented and brought into the suite of Oscar Peterson, uh, wow. and um, which was kind of an amazing thing. I that 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 they did that for for us. Well, I guess if you've got a big budget, you can do a lot of stuff. It wasn't a big budget, but I, it was <laughs> Peterson. <laughs> and a moving costs a few bucks. Right. And, That's and right. right. Right in the middle, you've got one of my all-time favorites, John Schofield, that not that many people probably know. Oh, man. John Schofield, I've seen play many times. Yeah. And B Billy Stewart on drums. Is this Steve Swallow, the bass player? Steve Swallow, yep. Yeah. yeah, he's he just came out with, well, Schofield just came out with an album of Steve Swallow tunes in the last right. Yeah. Weeks. I don't have that record yet, but I should get that. Yeah. He's a great guitar player, isn't he? Wow. Yeah, he played with Miles. And actually he's doing a live concert at the Blue Note live streaming. I think it's next week. Mm -hmm. I should uh, I should get that link up on, on my page for my, mm. my many fans here. And here you've got a great quartet of guys, uh Roy Haynes, yeah, drummer in his nineties, and uh Looks like Joshua Redman and Christian McBride. Kind of, I recognize all these guys. Yeah, Which Kenny is, Barron. Oh, Kenny Barron. Okay, yeah, great. And uh, I already mentioned Matheny, who I got to meet once, and uh, Steve Gad. Yeah, I, I I peeked at some of these guys. So let me tell you again. Yeah, that's one thing about that that story right there. That's Donald Which, Fagan. Donald Fagan, Steve, Steve, Dan. Steely Dan with Sonny. And, with Sonny, and this is at the Apollo, right? So this mm -hmm. is the night that Sonny is, win is sort of getting an award uh, from the Jazz Foundation uh, of America uh, in New York at the Apollo Theater. And and Donald Fagan was there, and I s somehow made this picture happen because these are like my two favorite artists in the world. All right, mm -hmm. so. Two greats, yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing is that they, they had never met before. Huh. So I got Donald Fagan to come down into Sonny's um, room, his green room, and they started talking. And then Donald Fagan started talking about um, how Sonny influenced him as a young man. And he, he started listening to his music. And he, he said that one of the most important things that I remember about your music is your humor. And... Uh, and so Sonny was like, oh, yeah, that's great. You know, that's what I wanted to put into some of my some of my music. And they just they started talking about, and I'm not kidding, life, death, cancer. I mean, it was really, it was really deep. It was so You got deep. to just sit and listen. I wish to God I had recorded it because oh, yeah. it was, it was uh, but I was just in awe of hanging out there. And I tried to be a fly on the wall, even though I was kind of directing them. So uh, Steely Dan had Wayne Shorter play on one of the records, but I guess they never yeah. had Sonny play. No, no. I was, uh, I was just thinking of that lyric, learn to work the saxophone. Yeah. Deacon Blues. Yeah, Deacon Blues. I wonder what that played on, uh, played on Asia, Wayne Shorter. Yeah. On that, that song. Right. So he played know. on um, Stones, three, three Rolling Stones records. Was, oh, uh, right, right. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. 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 Amazing meeting. When these great yeah, that was a good one. 
and Clark Terry, the trumpeter. Yeah. Over there. And is that Christian McBride again? Uh, yeah, it's Christian there. David Sanborn, Kenny Barron, Paul Motion. Paul Motion, amazing. He he also strikes quite a pose. He does. And was playing well into his 80s, passed away a few years ago. Amazing, amazing drummer. Incredible, incredible musician. Made great records right up until uh, yeah. his last I have, year. I have so many of his records. Me too. I have his recent, recent records on ECM. Yeah. And uh, old stuff going back with Bill Evans. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, guy man. The, this guy in the middle, I don't recognize. Okay, that's Pino name. Palladino. Don't Pino Palladino him. is the bass player now for the Who. Really? But he also played bass for D'Angelo. He mm -hmm. also plays bass for John Mayer. And he's from Wales and is like the nicest guy, right? So I was doing a story. I did a cover on for Bass Player Magazine. And it was in a mm -hmm. hotel room, and I brought a backdrop. And we hung out for the afternoon, and um, he was—he uh, knew everything about jazz, everything. Even though he's uh, more of a rock player. Well, I think he's—he's he's just uh, just a player. He's just a player. I mean, he could yeah. do. It. You you wanted to play country western, he could do it. You know, um, I'm sure. I, I guarantee he could do whatever you asked him to do. Guy with an Italian name from Wales. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we already talked about Brecker and Jason and Joe Lovano. Who's the guy walking backwards with the saxophone? That's Lou Soloff. I mean, Lou Soloff. Trumpet. You know Lou Soloff? Um, Lou Soloff, great uh, trumpet player. He, he passed away five years ago, maybe a little guess, longer. I guess I don't know him. Yeah, he was blood, sweat, and tears. He was oh, also, okay. he was also um, a guy that Brecker played with. And, you know, he was sort of a musician's musician. Uh, mm -hmm. Funny guy, real New York. I, I, I want to come work with you, John, just hanging out with <laughs> jazz musicians all day. It's a, it's a lot more fun than working in the financial industry. You How, still, are you still in the financial industry? Yeah, I'm just yeah. in a different company. The company before this one was the one that that lady was associated with. Got it. Mega 30,000 person corporate behemoth. So there's Tal Winken, if I can pronounce her last no, name. Well, Winkenfeld. 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 Yeah. She plays bass probably uh, with Jeff Beck. Yeah, that's what that's what most people know her from. The, yeah, the she's light, light yeah. Ronnie Scott's Jeff Beck. She's amazing in that. Yeah, she's. Uh, um, I met this. She was about twenty-two when I met her. I'm gonna say fifty years younger than Jeff, but <laughs> everybody fifty years younger. Than Jeff. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And Keith Emerson. Yeah, is that Keith Emerson with his movie. Keith Emerson. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was and, uh, yeah, tragic story there. We don't have to yeah. get into. And uh, Rolling Stone, uh, what's his Ronnie name? Wood? Yeah, the, the other one, Ronnie Wood. Yeah, <laughs> Clark Terry again. Um, That's Al Gray there. Oh, and Clark Terry, right? Uh huh. And Max Clark Rose Terry on yeah. the, on trumpet. Right. A flugel, that's a flugelhorn, believe me. That is a flugelhorn. Yeah. I know the difference. <laughs> and then this pu pi picture at the bottom, I actually love the pose here. Yeah. That's Jones and Jones. That's right. Which is which? So Hank is on the left, Elvin is on the right. And um, so this was, I think this was Hank's, this was Elvin's last recording, maybe. Um, I have, and, an, I have an ignorant question. Is this yeah, brothers, brothers or father and son? They're brothers. Okay, that's what I. There's three brothers: Elvin, Hank, and Thad. Thad, right. Jones. and Elvin and Hank. This was 2002, and um, so they we I did two days of recording. Uh, they've been recording music, and it was really another highlight of my career. I got to tell you, just hanging out with these guys. And Richard Davis was the bass player, and Elvin was there, and and I had done a picture of the. Remember the Smothers Brothers? Yeah. So I had done a picture that was kind of like that, okay. and I and I told them about it, and so they said, "Yeah, we'll do that." So they they put their heads together, and boom, that was the shot. Oh, the two facing the Smothers Brothers did that. Yeah, idea. yeah, the Smothers Brothers. You know, they're they're sort of the same. I got, I got all their records. I mean, I I can't remember all of them, but. 
Yeah. Uh, interesting. I have a shot like that with my son and his grandfather oh, looking into nice. each other's eyes yeah. as, a, as an infant. And it's just, I love that pose with a, especially two family members. Yeah, I, I, me too. Me Very too. nice. Yeah, thanks. So the Smothers Brothers is where we stole it from. I didn't know that. That's where I got the idea. That was my inspiration. I wouldn't guess that. Yeah, well, sometimes, you know, you get these ideas and, you know, you, you reveal them and you think, oh, so that's how you got the idea. But um, sometimes they, they just kind of pop in there and you, you, you have to sort of act on them. Well, that one that I took was a complete candid. I mean, yeah. They were just looking at each other. And yeah. I, I snapped what I consider my best photo I ever took. So there you go. I'll show you that someday. Um, well, John, we've got, we've gone on about an hour here. Okay, great. And I think that's uh, that's, enough. Do. that's enough for one day. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll come do it again at uh, Sunny's ninety fifth and hundred, maybe sooner. Yeah, especially man. if you have some good music uh, projects to share with us. Um, so I really appreciate you coming on here, and I don't know if you have any parting words or a, or a happy birthday for Sunny, but uh, yeah, now's well, the time. now's the time. Um, yeah, Sunny is um he should be celebrated every day not just on his birthday i think that he is uh any 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 jazz musician is in debt to him and um and if you don't know his music you should know that you should go out and get as much as you can and listen to as much as you can Buy because, all records, folks. yeah there you go right that's that saxophone colossus record that's a, that's a winner those are my two favorites there that the, the yeah. That glasses and the bridge. That's another one of my favorites. Um, and a but few more strewn around there somewhere. But. It doesn't matter what you listen to. You just just uh, enjoy it, and you know the, the music is what's important. Yeah, well, but it helps to have a nice photo to look at on the cover <laughs> and in the magazine. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for doing this. Yeah, John, I really appreciate you spending all this time with us uh, in your uh, busy schedule back there in New York and. Uh, uh, I will link to your website uh, uh, on the on the notes on this uh, little little recording we're doing. And folks, stay tuned and check out the other interviews that I did uh, with friends of Sonny and admirers of Sonny, and trying to spread the word for those who maybe don't know about him. So, John, I think that's it. We'll sign off. Yes, sir. Have a great night. You Thanks too. For, uh, <laughs> for the time. We'll talk Thank to you, you soon. All right. Bye. -bye.